Cow Art of Sports here with Ring Star CEO uh, Richard Schaefer. Man, we're uh, this is a great, fantastic card. First, I want to talk to you about your first card, though. Uh, Cuellar versus Mares. It was a great turnout. The event was great. The fights themselves were excellent. T tell us what uh, it was like to kind of just be back in it, man. Well, I mean, I knew, you know, when you put together cards, and you just know that uh, you know when it's going to be a great, a great card. Mm -hmm. And the fans responded. I mean, the fighters uh, turned in a great performance, sensational knockouts, sensational fights. Uh, fans were entertained. Uh, the Galen Center, I think, was a great host. Great seats there for boxing. Uh, so it really turned out, uh, as I thought it would, maybe even better. Um, and, and I'm happy for, 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 for the sport, for the fans, to have seen such a great card shortly before Christmas. And you're starting off 2017 with the bang, man. You're hitting the ground running. This is a fantastic card. It's Santa Cruz versus Frampton 2. It's our teaching versus Mike Garcia. Let's talk about the main event. Uh, a lot of people's uh, fight of the year last year. Um, a lot of people named Frampton fighter of the year because right. partially because of that victory. Tell us uh, how that main event is going to go. Well, you know, it's another one. You were mentioning December 10th. So you go now to January the 28th. I can you can bet your farm you know that this is going to be another top to bottom great card and whoever is going to show up there and I can tell it's going to be a lot of people tickets are selling extremely well uh, I anticipate the sellout at the MGM Grand Garden Arena uh, they're going to be treated to a spectacular night and not just the main event but really from the first fight down I mean and we, last week we just added or this week earlier this week we added Lee Selby uh, on as well to defend his titles you have three world title fights it's Lee Selby, mentioned by many as the Mayweather of, of Wales, a uh, very skilled fighter. And then, you know, with Mikey Garcia, you have, as I said before, um, one of the best fighters in the sport, one of the most exciting, one of the most charismatic, taking on a fighter from Montenegro, who I call the King Kong of Montenegro, <laughs> a huge puncher, very dangerous uh, opponent. and. Um, and many writers, boxing experts, actually are picking uh, Dejan to win the fight, including uh, you know somebody whose opinion I value very much, Dan Rayfield from ESPN. Yeah. He's picking Dejan to win, and so you know this is as dangerous as it gets. But it just shows you what Mikey Garcia is all about. I mean, he wants those challenges, and he knows what to do. I mean, he's a puncher, he's a boxer, he's just he's everything. So great, great, great matchup, and the main event is like as solid as it gets. I mean, there's very few fights you can pick which you would anticipate more than that. I mean, this is like round 13, and uh, we'll see what's going to happen. Who knows, maybe we're even going to be treated to a trilogy uh, if uh, if Leo, which I, th I believe he will, uh, uh, you know, make some adjustments and, and win the fight. I, I think Leo is ready mentally and physically. I think he was clearly distracted the first time around, um, where you had uh, uh, his father, you know, diagnosed with cancer, wasn't in the wasn't in the in the gym for big parts of his training camp. So now here he knows to make the adjustments, and still the first fight was a close fight. I mean, it could have been a draw, it could have been going Leo's way, and. Uh, with all of these distractions and fighting outside of his comfort zone in in, uh, in New York for the first time and you know all of those things taken into consideration I think here in Las Vegas some of the biggest victories Leo's, Leo had came exactly in that arena so he feels very comfortable thank God his father is doing better and uh, so he's having a great training camp and things are going well so I feel that that uh, uh, Leo will, will be able to pull it off and, and take those belts back home. You, uh, you mentioned that undercard is a fantastic undercard. When I found, I, I couldn't believe actually they were fighting each other because it's it's like a mega fight, and, yeah. and I, I want to bring a lot of attention to that. Uh, Mikey Garcia, you know, had a two-year layoff, had a one fight uh, since um, that that layoff thing happened, but now he's fighting a monster in, in uh, Zartichanin. How do you see that fight going? Well, I see it going with, a, it's going to end in a knockout. Yeah. And, you know, I was telling Mikey when I when that fight was made, are you sure you want to fight this guy? Right. And he says, no, that's what I, that's who I want, you know. And it's his second fight back, and he goes for a world title against one of the most devastating punches in the sport. I mean, it shows you the guy got balls. Right. Uh, I mean, he really does. And so, uh, 
um, he knows what to do and he knows how to neutralize the power and uh, uh, you know but he's gonna have to tighten up his defense a bit because in the first fight he got hit a bit you know and that makes that fight so dangerous so but he knows he has with his his brother uh, Robert one of the best trainers in the sport in the corner and they know to put together the right plan uh, to uh, to become world champion and it's just this, this is exactly the kind of fighters the sport needs you know fighters who challenge themselves and uh, that is what Mikey Mikey Garcia is Mikey's a free agent is uh, you're looking to kind of sign him maybe after this he'd be like a, a megastar signing first megastar signing it for uh, for ringstar well you know uh, I'm sure everybody would love to sign Mikey and uh, you know Mikey and me have a nice relationship we work very well together and as I've uh, as I've shown in the past you know like with, with Floyd Mayweather for example you know I never had Floyd Mayweather signed and yet he turned out to be one of the most loyal fighters I have ever promoted mm. and even though there was no contract because when you do things right and you um, work as a team and you treat each other with respect then sometimes you know you don't really need a contract and uh, so you know whether whether we whether Mikey decides to sign with Ringstar or whether he decides to work with Ringstar, it doesn't really make a difference. I mean, the difference is that I think uh, Mikey and I make a great team and uh, I think I bring things to the table which can help him to really become a pay-per-view star. I mean, I look at, I look at these recent pay-per-views and I, you can look at the pay-per-views going forward from here on. I mean, honestly, the way those pay-per-views have been promoted, I mean, it doesn't really, there's no exposure, there's no 360 marketing, there's not, there's not the kind of stuff I used to do, taking it to the movie theaters and, you know, all those kind of things. So it's a pretty flat and then people are surprised, why are the pay-per-views not performing? Well, it's a reflection of, the, of how you promote and it's maybe a reflection as well on the quality of the matchups which end up on pay-per-view, which some of them are great fights, but they, more, they, more but they're really more like premium cable uh, fights than they are pay-per-view fights. And and you know, I recently saw an interview from from Bob from Bob Barum, and I agree with him. I think the sport of boxing has to go through some sort of like a, a an adjustment period uh, because you have you you know you have you you have people who feel that they are entitled to a certain amount of money, and yet that certain amount of money is not really reflective of the true market value and you know I think pay-per-view or the lack of paper the lack of, of, of buys pay-per-view buys does the trick I mean it's gonna give people a, some sort of a reality check do you feel I've, I've asked other people about the pay-per-view market right now and uh, a lot of people tell me that it's kind of like the the hangover from from Pacquiao Mayweather do you do you agree with that I totally disagree I mean come on in today's world, the attention span is so short. You think people still think about a pay-per-view from two years ago? I mean, I mean that's just that's, that's bullshit, you know. So that's not that's not true. Um, and you know, the pay-per-view business. You look at some of the pay-per-view numbers UFC has delivered. So so if you have the right pay-per-view and you have the right characters and the right promotion, pay-per-view still sells. And so you just need to have the right the right fights. And, uh, and the night the right promotion and you know I mean I think the piracy has become a bigger issue uh, I see like uh, you know people watching it on periscope and on of those other things um, and it's really has really become an issue but I still believe if you put together a great fight and I'm, when I say fight I don't really mean only one fight I mean a whole card. Uh, because pay-per-view is a time where you get together with friends and you have a barbecue and you have some Coronas uh, or whatever uh, and, 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 and you hang out, you know, and you, you don't want to be basically having to kill time to wait for the main event and you have all these bullshit undercards on there, um, many of them quick knockouts and then you have the announcers talking for an hour trying to kill time I mean that's not entertainment and I think we need to bring the entertainment factor back in the pay-per-view product and do what it used to be and I remember some of those great pay-per-views even you know some of those great pay-per-views Don King used to do uh, where from the first fight to the last fight you were entertained 
and that's what we need to do. Just want to get your take, uh, just being that you're in the business. Ronda Rousey's last fight, she lasted 46 seconds. She didn't want to do media, all that stuff. What was kind of your assessment of that whole situation? Well, I feel bad for her the way it, it turned out. I think she is a, a tremendous asset to, to the sport, uh, uh, the, the UFC brand. Uh, uh, and I think female, female, female sports. Period. I mean, she really opened doors for many others, and uh, and I feel bad for her. And uh, um, you know, and I, I can only wish wish her the best. Maybe she should come to boxing. Hey, there you go. <laughs> last question, man. Carlos, but the Balderas brothers. Uh, you had you signed them last year. We're waiting on a date. What's the latest with them? Um, yes, it looks like March 14th uh, from Los Angeles. Uh, and so I'm working currently on that. The plan is to put some of the other young Olympians on as well. I signed like Misael Rodriguez, the Mexican Olympian uh, who medaled. Um, a Monte Stanionis, uh, the star out of, uh, amateur star out of Lithuania. And, um, and then just the recent signing uh, who signed uh, with me uh, earlier this week, Manny Powell. Uh, so the number one ranked welterweight amateur fighter who decided 18 years young who decided to turn <laughs> pro I'm really really excited about that so I want to put together a, a great card with some of these young young emerging talents well, hey man we can't wait to see where Ringstar goes you're, you're off and running we love to have you back thank you so much sir for the time really appreciate it thank you